Onigashimasu! Welcome back to the Gojuri Karate Center. Um, hopefully the echo is not too loud. Uh, thanks for joining us on a Friday night live stream. Not too long, uh, relatively short video. And the idea being that we could do something very quick and easy uh, this week so that people will get something from us. Um, we've had a hectic week, so there's been little space or capacity for editorial work this week. Since so Zoe has asked me to do a video on roundhouse kick and basic ideas on how to improve one's roundhouse kick. So I'm approaching this from the point of view of very basic fundamental kehon and for all the very serious professional fighting type people out there who are doing MMA and Kudo and um, the far more physical types of karate, Mu Thai, etc. Obviously, you do what you guys do. You have your own brand of kick, your own style of kick. And this tutorial may be more in line with people who do classical karate, um, who are children, and people who are just simply trying to get their head around this concept of a roundhouse kick um, and what, it's per or what, what to do to make it a little bit better. Okay, obviously we have some technical differences between, let's say, our roundhouse kick from karate and the roundhouse kick from Muay Thai. But the goal is still that the kick is going to curve and arch and go into the body and do some kind of damage. And the level of impact is going to be radically different because in the one art form I work with, I work with children, um, I am not trying to teach my kids to kick somebody so hard that they fall in half and fly across the room and that's it, or across the ring and fight over. Uh, the guys doing uh, Muay Thai, cool, love what you guys are doing, I'm not trying to step on your toes, per se. Alright, so let us get on with the basic ideas of roundhouse kick. So, roundhouse kick um, can be broken down, in my opinion, into the easier front foot version of kicking, which you see a lot more in sport karate, and then a little bit more of the classical type back leg kicking where it comes out of the back and you start seeing that the front foot kick a little bit more snappy and light and the back foot kick tends to be a lot more aggressive a lot more powerful and can cover a little bit more distance maybe so there are two different kinds of kicks and if you do a lot of study on roundhouse kick you start seeing that there are subtleties that give you different variations and you see this a lot with technicians who are trying to kind of shave off little bits of the kick uh, for the sake of being a little bit faster, a little bit more accurate um, and trying to score a better point in particular for sport karate. Alright, so let's get on to the, the simple mechanics of roundhouse kick and all I'm going to do is I'm going to do the front, front leg kick and I'll just move myself over here and what, what's going to happen is you're going to step up and a lot of people will step up and then turn the leg and to shave off a little bit on the process I try and teach people to step up immediately with their foot in the opposite direction the knee is going to bend that way and so you're going to step up and start bringing that leg up and then from there you're going to rotate over okay and then the foot's going to extend. So if I concentrate on what I'm doing and I step up and then I'm going to kick. And if I want to try and teach a person accuracy, uh, maybe you put your hand out. And what my sensei used to say, do get on the right when you do yokogiri. Um, and that's going to teach you to get your kick on the straight line and get your hip on the same line. Um, but if I just put my hand out, then I'm kind of getting an idea, I'm kind of aiming, don't do that in competition, everybody's going to know what you're doing, but um, kind of bring the kick up. Now, height is determined by knee raise, flexibility, and cantilever. And so, as you get a little bit older, you might find that your flexibility is starting to wane, and you cantilever a little bit more. And if you're young and very supple, you might be upright and the foot is up here because you're supple and flexible and you have that uh, dynamic flexibility. I, I know some people who cannot do the splits, cannot touch their toes effectively but can put their foot up 
dynamically in space like this high. All right, and it is a different kind of flexibility that they've worked on and developed. So for now, we're working on this front foot and we're just gonna step and bring the foot up. From the front, if I'm kicking towards the camera, what we wanna do is we wanna conceal as much of the kick as possible. So there my kick ended, I'm looking at my kick ended about here, which is very, very short. Okay, so I, I, I would be, if I'm training on my own, I would actually be trying to zone in uh, or zero in my kick. I'm going to need to bring it in that much this way and then my foot's on target. Okay, that kind of idea. And that's just a question of being actively uh, invested in the kick. Now, this is that very easy light front foot kick a lot of people are doing in sport karate and you would teach it very basically one like you are doing ballet two lift up three rotate four extend bring back back to your position and so you'd have the step up kick you could also teach from a slightly higher stance that they can rotate back it's kind of like pivoting into kokutsu dutch going this way and then kicking and this is very useful for defensive kicking um, if a punch is coming absorbing and counter kicking so if i'm in this position and i've got a slightly higher stance as the punch or attack is coming in especially in the sporting environment i'm moving into this position absorbing and now lifting and kicking and again you can see my first zero kick was out about that much and so if I'm conscientious about it, I can bring that kick in by simply adjusting my hip position and rotating my body a little bit. So you can see where understanding the nature of the kick and where you want to go and how to rotate your body, you can kind of achieve the goal that you desire. Now, obviously an extra set of eyes, the coach, the sensei, a third training partner observing two people in a scenario who is knowledgeable enough is unbelievably important because it helps you improve and so you can start working on your kick the next kick the next type of runner's kick because there we've done a, a aggressive stepping up and we've done a defensive rocking backward kick is that we can move towards that back leg kicking and the hard part here is do you raise your leg through the center or do you bring your leg in this big kind of trajectory so a lot of the time the power that is associated with roundhouse kick is this kick that comes from here and the whole body is kind of invested in throwing the leg and then the leg is spun out off of the knee joint so as i'm standing i'm getting to this position and then my leg is extending to create the round ass kick so this is the one style of round ass kick and a very important training aid that's going to be too high give me a second thought I had all the props I needed. I didn't think about this one. All right, a very important training aid would be something that you would, like a hurdler, have to bring your leg over. So part of your training would be how to effectively raise that leg up and go over. So you'd have some kind of obstacle, something that's not gonna hurt you, and you're gonna raise your leg up and over it. And at the same time, you're gonna start to pivot on the back foot. So you're gonna literally start pushing this leg this way. And you're gonna bring that leg over. Maybe if I change the angle a bit. So, and just delaying the kick a little bit so that you can see the idea of bringing this leg over. And it's super useful 
if I'm effectively trying to kick a punch bag. So, We're going to move the camera. The light may, may change a little bit. Give me a sec. I'm going to take you guys back a bit. So, you're not going to see my front foot pivoting, but I'm going to pivot. And so, it's super important. This is one of the things I used to do a lot of, is train with an obstacle to clear to throw my leg. And then, try and bring that kick around. And effectively, in terms of sport karate, if I'm trying to kick a person in the ribs, I may want to lengthen out my kick. And so to do that, I'm going to move my obstacle back. It's going to force me to cantilever a little bit and allow me to throw that foot a little bit further. And then I'm going to just, one of the important things is to see your foot hit the target. A lot of people kick and they're looking over there and they're not seeing the foot hit the target. They wonder why they don't score the point, especially in WKF and WUKF style karate. If you're not seeing the point for yourself, you're not seeing your foot hit the target, effectively there's no zanjan. Also your control is going to be bad. So we're going to work on the idea. We've got this here obstacle. Concentrate on the target and try and kick around. Now, that is that very low kick. And you can work on, hopefully I don't kick the bag, I mean the, this, this one here, trying to raise that kick up. So to kick higher, I need to be closer. Okay, just simple physics. All right, to kick higher, I need to be closer to my target and I need to bring that leg up to kick. All right, so as I do this, what I want to do is I want to get that foot up there. I often say to people, bring the leg up and just put your foot on the ear. But it's not that easy. Most people don't pivot. There's inadequate pivot on this hip. So I often practice. This is leading. This is really difficult to do in slow motion. This coming up and then I'm extending the foot into another zone. I prepared the bag with four zones so that we could work out how to improve the kick. Okay, so same kick, different uh, target. I have to, I, I can do the same thing. The next option is that option of if I am standing and I raise this leg, and as I raise the leg and then extend it, so I'm going to raise the leg, turn it, and extend it. So I'm going to go up, turn, extend, and move down. You'll notice that I tend not to kick and to snap back. My, my gut feeling is, A, I'm probably a bit weak. Um, at, at, at a certain point, that's a core issue. Um, but I feel always felt a lot of strain on my joints when I do that because I've twisted my body into such an awkward position which around us kick is and now I've got to pull it all back and that's not so easy and the most simple and most logical thing is well if I'm going to kick I'm not going to kick and come back it's not a defensive thing if I'm going to do a defensive kick I might as well kick with my front foot I'm actually going to kick and go forward and I'm going to place my foot and then move and that's very, very important, is that the placement of the foot after the kick is critical. If you just fall on your leg and it takes time, you're gonna have a problem. So you would work on trying to get your foot down from the target, especially if you're doing competitive karate again, bring that foot down a little bit faster, it's gonna make a little bit of a difference. But now if you're an old person like me and uh, you're uh, approaching 50, and you're trying to do roundhouse kick, it's really, really hard. So obviously lower kicks are easier. And this particular style of kick, which has got this uh, very deceptive coming through the center channel and then curling round, 
is a different style of roundhouse kick and again it lends to itself to the idea that I've got uh, roundhouse kick from my front foot which is a different mechanism I've got a roundhouse kick that comes from uh, rocking back onto my back foot and then lifting my leg and kicking now then I've got a roundhouse kick that comes in a big long arc and then I've got a roundhouse kick that comes from the center and relies on the hinging motion of my leg to hit the target. And these are all the very base exercises. So how do you improve your roundhouse kick? Well, obviously getting things like this right, standing, lift, hooked. So for the last version of the kick, you would actually spend time raise, hold, Pivot and leg rotation, same time. And then just simply down. Ooh, I've got, a, I've got a, 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 a parquet panel that is poking my big toe. All right, up and then pivot and then back and down. And so you'd have this as a very, very basic exercise that you would practice. It's a small segment of the kick, but if you can make it efficient, you're going to improve the overall efficiency of the total kick. You always have to bring it back to something tangible to kick. Don't kick too much fresh air. It tends to hurt the joints. Try and kick the target. And then if you need to, you can practice either whacking into the target or simply tipping the target, which would be different types of kicks for different kinds of purposes. So we've got that. Um, what I would do to kind of teach the other kick, again using this obstacle, is I can't bring my leg around, I'm going to kick into this, so now my goal is to bring my leg up through this channel and try and kick and lift and extend my leg as I go. Um, if you can, one of the fundamentals of good kicking, keep your guard up. Don't keep your hands down and don't drop your hands as you kick. So if you can keep your guard up and you can just allow it to rotate, it's a little bit better. And this is a very useful exercise in leading you to a decoy roundhouse kick. So if you're practicing this, you now start doing the following. You create a channel on one side of your obstacle and you then have to bring it around the obstacle and so if I can go this way and I now extend the leg extend and then I kick on the other side now this is that flick flack type roundhouse kick that you see a lot of people doing in tournaments they would literally be up and around okay uh, since they Somewhere in America, if he ever watches this, is going to be going, Shay, your hands are still down. There's a photo to prove my hands are down as a ring belt. So, <laughs> hands up and around. Try not to collapse as you kick. You may notice, oops, collapsing a little bit. And the idea is maybe start further, gradually bring this in. Narrow that channel down. In narrowing the channel, what you effectively start teaching yourself is to shave unnecessary portions of the kick off so that the kick becomes efficient. Now this is great in a world of tip is good. The opposite side of the same coin is that if you shave off too much and you really need a kick, that is going to be devastating. The problem is going to be that you don't have enough left in the muscles to kick into a person effectively and that it's going to be like a good kick. You kick them in the head and they fall down or they spit out their teeth. All right. And that is the fine line that you need to tread as a karate practitioner. Obviously, flexibility training and control are super important. 
So to help my training when I was younger, I'm using the big red sponges here, and I don't know if I can still do this, I'm getting old. Okay, is I would place an obstacle directly against the bag, and I would sit and practice doing round ass kick into the bag, especially off the back foot. And the idea was to try and clear my knee above this. Hopefully I don't fall on my backside and make a fool of myself, okay? And so the idea is try and lift up and over. All right, and there you see that big wind up kick coming out. It's a different kind of kick. It's a different kind of mechanism and a different kind of mentality. You can see that on the bag as I kick it. And you try and change the angle a little bit better for the camera. That as I'm kicking, I really want to put my, my energy there. All right, I want to relax. If I'm tight, I'm going to struggle to kick. I need to relax. And so you're going to practice this. Uh, relax and kick. Okay. And then try and get that foot up there and into the target. And over an obstacle. What's the obstacle? Their guard and their shoulder. Okay. And it's important to try and develop that kicking ability so that you understand if I create an obstacle what is that obstacle what's its purpose my first obstacles were to streamline the initial part of the kick this next obstacle is to force my legs and my hips to open and to allow me to kick into the target so I don't end up crumpling as I kick it's a very very serious issue when you're in this position and doing a roundhouse kick and you just have to go and look at uh, Sir Tiki Donovan's book and you have to look at the ideas of lines and lengths. Term, terminology I think more from cricket than from karate. But if you break the line and you fall onto that punching line, somebody's going to hit you in the face. And that tends to be very old school in mentality. Alright, so... Zone, zone kicking for control. It's a very important stepping stone in development. So I, I like to use something tangible again to kick. Um, uh, used to have a soda pop bottle, or what we or Coca Cola two liter bottle filled with water with sand as an anchor, and I had a nylon rope with a series of tennis balls, and it was suspended from my parents' carport roof from one of the beams hanging down and I would try and tap the ball without making the whole thing wobble. Again, my obsession was sport and so I was trying to develop this uh, kicking the target. Or I would train inside a door frame um, and imagine a door frame up, across and down and I would Touch the bottom of this frame, touch the bottom of this side of the door frame. Lift, touch, touch, and so on. Well, my, my skill set. Yes, I stole it from Jean-Claude Van Damme's Blood Sport. Or was a kickboxer movie. It's from one of those early movies. I saw them doing these kicks against all these panels, and I was like, wow, I can do that. Stole it and made it part. In the dojo, tie a couple of belts around a punch bag, and Tap, tap, tap. Okay, that's where my hip is going to allow me to go. Tap, tap, tap. Ah, tap. There we go. And you slowly build, build it up. Build up your, your ability to kick in each zone. Okay? And one's a, a leg tap, one's a thigh tap, one's a rib kick, one's a head kick. If you have students and you're teaching, Make them stand and face each other, and then they do a leg tap, thigh tap, rib tap, face tap. Give them paddles to work with. If you really want, you can work in one, two, three, four. So if I take this hand and I put it in front, tap, then immediately shift forward, tap, shift forward or extend, tap, shift forward and tap. So you're working on a straight line, trying to develop the depth of the kick. And these are very technical drills that you would do with highly skilled 
uh, sports competitors to develop their kicking. If you want to kick a person to drop them, just simply take a heavy bag and practice kicking. All right, you make sure you're kicking with the shin and the bridge of the foot at first, and then later on, start kicking with the ball of the foot and trying to condition. But if you don't have toe flexibility, you're gonna break your toes, so please be careful. All right, so that is an explanation for this particular setup that you can do. And then finally, I'm just gonna move from here. Give me a sec. Uh, sorry, I'm bouncing all over the place. Okay, so a monkey warrior or the wall or whatever that works for you. And you're essentially gonna lift up, stretch. Okay, I'm gonna do it towards the bag, so, or two towards the camera. So I'm gonna turn, lift, hold that, and now kind of line up my knee, my hip, and my eye. And if you really wanted to work hard, put an eye patch over this eye and concentrate on getting this eye looking at the target. That'll improve your depth perception and get this position. And then I can stretch a little bit forward. I'm going to do it this way. So I'm up, round. Let's say I want to kick over there. And now I'm just going to cantilever and stretch the inside as I go. Now to extend that kick about, best friend, wrap it around the foot. Um, you may need to double wrap and get it into a nice position, but I generally do something like this and uh, pack up my trouble zone and hold them on my shoulder and then just lift it up. Now what I can do, I'm just gonna move back. So I'm gonna try and stand up without dropping my knee. So I've got this knee up, now I'm gonna try to keep up and lift my head without dropping my knee. So this is slow and incremental kind of stretching, but also trying to get your body in the correct position. I know there's a field of flexibility studies going on that says that the slow static stuff is not necessarily as useful as something more dynamic. Obviously, done a little bit of dynamic kicking already. I'll do a little bit of dynamic kind of stretching afterwards. Okay. Now, the reason I'm going here is that I am constantly trying to get that foot onto target. So if I'm working this way and I'm trying to get that foot up onto target and then I'm going to use the belt to kind of pull my leg up and that's going to try and improve my flexibility. But you have to be careful if you become so obsessed, maybe you tie your hand to the wall and you suddenly wobble, you're going to break your knee. So please always be cognizant of the fact that your body is going to be working kind of against you in this scenario. The final thing to consider is maybe dynamic style stretching. Just swinging. Notice how the foot kind of starts to get a little bit higher. And you will see, I think the other way to do this Swinging this way. And dynamic stretching tends to be a little bit more beneficial for some people in initiating that very fast dynamic explosion and retraction of the muscle fiber. And so in practicing both combination of dynamic as well as the slower and static style stretching, you should get a certain amount of benefit. The most important thing that you want to concentrate on is developing a good roundhouse kick that is both strong, that you haven't shaved off too many corners, and that you're not relying 
too heavily on dynamic uh, flex, flexibility and a certain amount of joint laxity. Because what tends to happen is if you're not pivoting fully and the, the leg is giving in at the knee, eventually you're going to end up with a knee issue or a hip issue. And I've seen this happen with competitors where the obsession is I've got to get a faster and better roundhouse kick. They're not willing to do the grunt work at the bottom of the, the training pyramid, which is the conditioning, the flexibility, the stabilizing, and then also the technical grunt work of rotation and pivot and pivot and pivot so that that becomes proficient. And if you don't do a lot of that and you don't develop a lot of that and you're just going out there and it tends to happen, especially if you're working with somebody who is investing heavily in, 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 in sport karate in this case, um, you may end up having an injured student who is no longer able to compete. The goal ought to be, how do I develop a good roundhouse kick for life, life, lifelong kicking? And I think one of the key important areas for this is actually doing things that are against something tangible. The tennis ball, the punch bag, um, paddles, um, your partner. You know, a very common drill in South Africa um, is something called the copy drill. One person will, you'll hold hands with your partner and your partner will do a kick. And you have to copy and do the exact same kick or sequence of two or three kicks. And so you start developing the ability to recognize the technique, but also the ability to replicate the technique. What tends to happen, however, is that people tend to rush with it and it becomes who can do it the fastest. Instead of somebody as a third party, again, oversight, turn your hip more, rotate, and doing segments of the copy draw with a partner and trying to get the correct position and then slow, excruciatingly slow kicking and that stretching and flexibility in the slow motion kicking develops an incredible amount of strength and condition in the body. It also helps when your core is incredibly strong and when your overall physique is incredibly flexible and supple. I'm gonna leave you there with that for tonight. I hope you had a good time watching and hopefully you found this a little bit useful wherever you are in the world. Have an awesome weekend. Arigato gozaimasu. Thank you very much for joining us. Cheers. I'm going to go read the comments now. Um, I know since Zoe's been answering.